And they knew I was in a cupboard. They knew I'd put myself in a cupboard. So I looked at him and you know, I went, like that. And I was like, hey? So I turned around and I'm like, <gasps> um, and I've kept that as I did with Wyman Kate's. Um, when wow. you know, I've kept, I've kept the. I know it's even still in the delicious. original. It's yes. Welcome to the latest edition of an afternoon tea with. I'm joined by former royal butler Grant Harold, who tended to the needs of Prince Charles, the Duchess of Cornwall, Prince William, and Prince Harry for seven years. Grant took me on a roller coaster ride through his time in the royal household from his funniest faux pas to his first meeting with the Queen. I started by asking him how it felt to meet his former boss for the first time in his job interview. Prince was kind of sitting there and I remember kind of looking and thinking, I can't believe this. And I was so nervous I was having tea because the butler came and started bringing the tea and everything. I'm thinking, I'm not even going to touch that because I won't even, I'll get that badly wrong. And he basically just asked about my upbringing, I told him about my dreams, I told him about my ambitions, I said about working at Hoban Abbey. I also had a little stint working at a folk park, which is where I learnt traditional skills, wood carving, stone masonry, and he was really interested in that because I remember mean, he said, you know, this is, this is good, he said, because if you, um, you know, if, if a wall needs repair and all, um, a bit of woodwork, he said, I can always ask you. So it was a bit of a, a huge amount of laughter about that. So it sounds like you had a good rapport with them. Yes. They were, could kind of yes, joke yeah. with you. And... Totally. We had so many fun mem fun times, fun memories as well. I remember one of the, the first things that happened, or that kind of went wrong, I was um, just doing kind of my early morning kind of duties or something, and I remember hearing the, the Prince's voice at the end of this corridor, and I panicked, and there was a door literally on my right hand. There was a door on the left and there was a door on the right. And I thought to myself, I'll go into this room. You know, I literally dived in, the door slammed behind me. And I, and I, and I was in pitch blackness. And I remember walking into like a shelf. I thought, oh, they won't know, they won't know I'm in a cupboard. And the next thing I heard was the prince saying to the Duchess, do you think he's okay? And, and then she said, is that not a cupboard? <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought, oh no, this is not good. So they knew you were in there. They knew I was in a cupboard. They knew I'd put myself in a cupboard. And I remember him saying, do you think he's going to come out? Is he going to stay there? Gonna... And I thought, I'm going to have to get out of this situation. So I thought, what I'll do is I'll pretend that I'm doing something and then I'll pretend that I'm now going to go into the room opposite. So I walk, I walk, I don't look at them. And I close the door and I'm thinking, don't be another cupboard, don't be another cupboard, don't be another cupboard. And it was a staircase. And then I, t and I was like, oh. Your eyes right. is good morning. And they looked at me and they were just grinning. And you good morning, Grant. You know, this is good. And anyway, so I closed the door. I bolt, I'm so embarrassed. I run downstairs, I run oh. round. And when I get to the pantry, I could hear them on the other side. And they were giggling away because they thought it was the funniest. They thought it was the cutest, but they thought it was the funniest thing. I, it was an icebreaker. It showed me that they're very relaxed. The press often catch them kind of laughing together. <gasps> So that's so nice to hear that it's like that behind closed doors or closed cupboards. Doors. <laughs> closed, closed cupboards. They have got the most wonderful relationship. I loved it when they got the giggles. It shows that wonderful human side to them, you know, because I think people get so caught up with the whole, with the royal family being a very different kind of family and everything, but they're not. What are they actually like as individuals? Let's start with Charles. He's very traditional, um, got a lovely sense of humour very caring. She's the same, she's got a wonderful caring kind of side. I mean, she's very much also hands-on. You know, well, I, I, I know over the years, you know, if you're, if you're in her presence or if you're, you know, she'll quite happily make a cup of tea for you. She's that kind of character. Really? Oh yeah. And if you had a problem, and this is personal experience, if you had a problem you wanted to speak to them, you could, you could speak to them about things as well, which I quite like. What kind of problem? Just if you're having a, say you're having a, um, a family, something to do with your family, or I remember getting a phone call once from Prince William. Um, there was a, a, a personal thing that had, that, had ha that had happened and he'd heard about it. And I remember he phoned up to see if I was okay. Mm. The whole family are very much like that. The thing also about Harry is he's very, um, he's got a care inside him. And I remember soon after starting to work for the family, he was really concerned that I didn't have any food in for that night because I said I hadn't, because I was still getting to know the area and stuff. And I remember saying, well, 
can I get you something? Do you want me to get you something? Will we, will, 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 do you want a takeaway or something? He was all really worried about it. And I remember thinking, this is amazing. Can you tell me about the first time that you met the Queen? The, the first time that I was introduced to the Queen was at her 80th birthday party at Kew Palace. I was seven and looking after the Queen for, the, for obviously for this party. And I remember Prince Charles turning around and saying, you know, oh, um, you know, mummy, uh, uh, can I introduce you to um, Grant, one of my butlers? And I remember the Queen kind of looking at me and going, oh, hello. And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't get the words. I was so amazed that I was actually being introduced by the Prince of Wales to his mother, the Queen. But it was, it was amazing. And she was just, she was lovely. Absolutely lovely. So did you get to go to any events? Or would you be working events? No, I've been to uh, I've been to the wedding of Prince Charles and the Dutch Court. In fact, that's with the, the the piece of cake that I was given at the time, which is what it must be about. Well, that was in two thousand and five, so that's seventeen years old now, and that was given to me at their at their wedding, and that is actually a piece of the cake that's still in the tin. I don't know if I'd advise that's you try amazing. it, but it's still in the tin, um, and I've kept that as I did with Wyman Kate's. Um, when wow. you know, I've kept, I've kept the. I know it's even still in the delicious. original. It's yes, yes. Um, you might need a trip to the hospital after eating it. But one of my favourite memories of talking about going to something would have been the Gillies Ball. So at Memorial Castle, the Queen has uh, two of these Gillies Balls when she's up there from the August to the October or end of September. And we drove through the gates and up to the castle, and I go into the ballroom. I suddenly was aware that somebody was walking and people were, were parting as they were walking and it was the Duchess. And she was coming to find me because she said, I will have the first dance with you. And as we're dancing, I remember about halfway through, she said, you see, are you okay? You, you'd obviously seem quite nervous. And I said, your highness, I had a dream as a child that I would be at this event and I would dance with the Queen. And when the dance came to an end, we stopped. And she suddenly was like, oh, like that. And I'm thinking, oh, I'm standing on her feet. So I'm looking, I'm not, I'm thinking, what? So I looked at her, and you know, and she went, oh, oh, like that. And I was like, hey. So I turned around and I'm like, oh. and behind me is, is, oh, the queen. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I knew it. I just knew this. I thought, this is my dream. This is my actual dream coming true. And now I'm really worried. And the queen went, right, you know, and got everyone ready for a dance. And we went into a reel. And um, so I say to people today that if, especially to child kids, if you have a dream or an ambition, no matter how much people tell you how crazy it is, stick to it because one day you can make that come true.